Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. This weekend my husband and I are going to a baby party. It's not a baby shower because the baby's already born. Um, it's just go meet the baby. And I wanted to make a special little card for him. And so I'm using the little wild set. And I like this, especially for baby and children cards because the little animals that are on there are so cute. I did use this little bear, make him into a polar bear for some of my Christmas cards, but uh, mainly I've used it for children's cards. And it's one of those sets that comes with framelets. Now, when you look at the framelets and you look at the stamp sets, you'll see that it's sort of a double stamp set. You get the front of the animal and the back of the animal. And when you use the framelet over the top as well to cut them out, it cuts out both pieces at the same time and you don't have a, a cut down here so you can fold the cards over and because you've got this nice little circle here as well it makes a gift tag so what I've done is I've themed the gift around this set and I've made a little gift tag for it using this set and I'm making my card as well so let me show you how we're making the card. If you've watched my videos before, you know I love pop-up boxes. And I did a whole series on different ways to decorate the pop-up box. And I like the rectangle box because it just fits into one of our envelopes perfectly. And uh, it gives you lots of space for designing or for adding little elements. So my two pieces were four inches by six inches. And I scored them at two, oh, let's turn it around, at two and at five and a half, and then turned it so on the short side, we scored it at two again. And then there would have been, let me look in my scrap box and find it for you. This is how it would have looked when it came oh, from being scored. So then I just cut up and down on this to take this piece out to leave a little tab just for gluing. And both pieces are exactly the same. What I've done differently on this one is I've just used my corner rounder and rounded the corners on all of the top pieces. Now to put it together I like to use Tombow. You can use um, tear and tape but I find that for these kind of cards, Tombow stays together better. It's much better at joining the fibres on the card and making them really stick. So that's why I tend to have Tombow as my glue of choice for this. Okay, I'm just going to glue those two pieces together. If you need to know sizings again or anything, just go back to my video where I, I did the original box card and showed you all the sizings. Okay, and I'm going to do the same with this little tab, just fold it down, add my Tombow, and then to make it easy, I'm just going to fold the card in half. So I know now that when I fold the card in half, it will lay flat. It won't be sticking out on one side or anything. Okay, we don't need that for a moment. Before I put the struts in the middle to hold the card still, I'm going to put my paper, my DCP on. And I've used the animal outing papers. Let me just get them for you. So I don't have the stamps for this set, but I do have the paper. And the paper is so cute. It's a lovely one for her. children's cards, lots of nice background pieces. If you don't have the stamps, you can do what I did and just cut out some of the animals. I'll just show you. I love these little alligators, crocodiles, I'm not sure which they are, but I do love those. I just didn't think they were quite suitable on a baby card. But you can see that the green in here is the green that I picked for my box. And this is Call Me Clover. 
Uh, it does have other greens in as well, and I will be bringing in some other greens, but I wanted the main box to match the paper. I love this grey. It's really subtle, but it's it makes a really nice backing for a man's card. It doesn't have to be um, for a children's card or anything. And I made a little thank you and I love you card for my husband and actually used this. So I thought these little butterflies on here look like hearts. So it's very nice paper. I'm going to be using some of this and the other side of it with a little frogs. So let's put that back. Okay, so our box is glued and it's dried now. So let me show you how we're going to assemble it. We're just going to fold the flaps down, but not the back flap. We're actually going to put a piece of card onto there because that's the part you'll see and the back we need the greeting on as well. So I've already cut my DSP. And as I showed you, I've chosen the one with the, um, I think it's lemon lime twist on. And I've got two that are cut just square and two that I managed to have a little frog on them and I've rounded the corners because they're going to go on these flaps that have the rounded corners. So I'm going to just find where I've put my glue and I'm just going to use my fast fuse for this. You can use Tombow, you can use your snail, anything works on this. It's not as important to use the Tombow and have it set on these because we're only adhering paper. Okay, so there's the one. And these little pieces were cut up one and three quarters by one and three quarters. But do look at my other videos on these cards just to get more tips on making the pieces and making sure that you've got all the right sizings. Okay, these little squares are also one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And they're going to go on the sides underneath this flap. It seems really strange sitting here in my craft room because I overlook our back garden and our back way and that overlooks a golf course. And for the first time since ooh, October, I think, there are people out playing golf and uh, I keep thinking, oh, who's that in my garden? Of course, it's not. It's on the golf course. <laughs> okay. And then we need a longer piece for here. And this is one and three quarters by three and one quarter. That just gives a nice border. You could, if you wanted, make this out of a different coloured coordinating card and then cut down your DSP a quarter of an inch all the way so that you have another layer. And sometimes I will put DSP underneath the flaps, but today I'm not going to. Now here's our next piece to go on here. And you'll see that I've rounded the corners again. And the card isn't standing square at the moment, just because I haven't got the struts inside. Okay. And then I've cut white piece for the inside. And this card is cut at uh, three and a quarter by three and three quarters. Three and a quarter by three and three quarters. I did try stamping on the back and uh, I didn't get the sentiment quite straight. But the sentiment I used was little one that says a great big welcome for a sweet little someone and I've stamped it fairly near the top and then you can see just in the corner I stamped these three little bees and I'm just going to lay this in here like that and that'll start and give a little bit more stability to our card and then I've done the same for the back. I've stamped the same greeting, a great big welcome for a sweet little someone, 
and the bees again and I've coloured them in with my blends and I used the light balmy blue for their wings and then I think it was the dark daffodil delight for their tummies. Okay, now I'll just put this one up and you see also that on these I score I um, used my corner rounder for the tops just so that it matched the corners on the flaps. Okay, and next you need two little green strips, the same as the um, the back in here, and these are cut. Let me remember one inch by by four and a half, and then they're scored at each end at a half, and you make two of those, and then you fold one of the edges one way and one the other way so that when it's in the box they will fold flat. If you fold them both the same way it's very difficult to get it to fold flat and you end up creasing this little piece of card. Now for this because it's sticking card to card I'm using the Tombow again. A little bit on each end I'm going to put this one near to the front. I'm just going to sort of hold one side on for a second or two. Just to make sure it's on. And then this one as well. Sometimes it's easier to lay your card nearly flat, push down that piece until it's level, and then squish it with your thumbs and fingers just till it dries. Wasn't quite dry. Let's hold it again for a second or two. And that way you know you get it straight and it's going to fold flat as well. And then the same with the other piece. I'll just put our Tombow on the back. And I'm going to make it so that the zigzag shape here goes the same way. I'm going to make sure that folds in a bit more. There we go. I'm going to put it right to the back on this one. Make sure it's level and then hold it down for a second. They are easy little cards to make these. It takes a little while just to cut all your, your card and your paper. But once it's cut, they're really easy to assemble. Okay, so now we've got the two little layers and that's where we're going to put our animals. Just put the lid on there. Okay, so I cut out, well I stamped and coloured and cut out one of each set of animals. So here are the elephants and then I coloured them with my blends. Here's the little lion and you can probably see that it's got that little piece on to use as a gift tag. And then here is the little bear. And again, you can see it easier on there, the gift tag. Okay. And when you need it for a gift tag, you just fold them exactly in half. There's a little stamp that says to and from that just fits in the middle if you want them to. And then you just thread through the little hole. Now this piece, I'm going to save for the gift. So what I did was I stamped another two of the bear and when I got to this stage, I only coloured the front and then I cut round the ear. So I only had the front of the bear and you're going to need two of those. But for the lion and for the elephant, I didn't cut them in half or anything because when I fold those over and put them in the box, you're not going to see the back of all my colouring or anything. It's just going to be covered up and you'll see you know, the back of the elephant or the back of the lion. What I am going to do though, while I've got it closed, is I'm going to get my paper snips. And I'm just going to pop my glasses on so I can see. I'm, I'm going to, where the little um, hole is here, for the thread, I'm just going to trim it off. And by using the front of the elephant, it means I haven't got any little extra bits sticking out. 
Okay, I'm going to do the same for the little lion. And this one's a little bit more tricky because you have to cut round his mane. And you can see on this one, where it folds over, you've got like a little square flap. And all I'm going to do is round it off like that. Okay, let's throw those bits away. I'm going to attach one of the animals on the back, one on the front, like this and then another one on the front here. And rather than sticking them on the front of the card, I'm actually going to overlap them over the card so that when you look from the back, oh, it's tricky for me to show you, but when you look from the back, you see all of the animal, not like that where you wouldn't see the back of his legs. I am gonna to use Tombow for this one. You don't need too much, you just need to make sure that the bottom of it has some glue on and then hold it just over the little card strut that you made, the little piece that goes across. And don't put it too far down, just a little bit down. I've got mine probably about half an inch down. And then just fold the two pieces, squash them together and that's what you need. Now it means that you can't see all of the writing because the little lion's in front of it, but when you hold it, at a, when you have it set down on a table or something, that's when you can read the writing. I'm gonna do the same with the little elephant. Make sure he's got some on his feet. And I'm going to just offset this so it's a little bit over here. So now we've got our little lion on there and our little elephant. And then I'm going to use the bear on the front here. And what I did was I stamped this piece, the Hello Honey Bear. Um, and you can see I stamped, actually stamped it three times. Didn't like this one because it had a blob. Um, but I stamped it three times just on here. And then I cut it out using a piece from Lily La Lilypad Lake. And I use this because I think it makes a, a great little, um, what do you call those pieces for the saying? Whatever you call that piece for the saying, it makes a great one of those. <laughs> a label, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. So here we are. So it's stamped over at the left hand side and it's going to go on here with our little bear on as well. And I'm only going to glue the bottom of the bear because I want to put the label or the sentiment up on dimensionals. So there he is stuck on there. Let's find some dimensionals for the back. I just wanted it to sort of stand up a little bit. I'm just going to put three on there. dries out and we're just going to put this here just across the front okay. now. now when you look at the card it looks a little bit bare here and I don't like seeing these straight lines you could use the die cut from colorful seasons which has the little hoop pieces on but I've used something else from the lily pad lake and I've used this little grass piece. And I've just cut out in the same Call Me Clover Green a few of these little pieces. I did also, from the little wild set, it had this piece in, like a little vine for the jungle. I cut some of those out. I don't know if I'm going to use those yet, but I do have some cut and ready. I see that these 
one of these pieces of grass still have a little piece in the middle. Let's just get those out. For the little vine piece, you will need your dye brush because these tiny little bits seem to stick in there really easily. And it was a bit of a pest trying to poke them out with my pokey pin um, with, with this. So I did, when you did them with the dye brush, they popped out really quickly. Okay, so let's see. I know that I'm going to put some near each of the animals and I think I don't want them to hide the animals that are behind or anything. So I'm going to glue them quite well down. And I think for the lion, I'm going to put one just near him so it looks like he's peeping through. I'm going to put a few of these, just a couple, because it just gives a little bit extra sort of dimension and makes it look a little bit different. Makes it look like the animals are peeping out of the grass as well. If you have a dye that looks like cut grass, that one would be perfect. You could put it all the way along. Let's put these on here. Stick them behind this little elephant. just in front of this bear as well, just to tie it all in together. And let's, let's pop another one down here at the other side of the elephant. I'm going to put it on an angle like that. There we go. Let's see. I'll do the same with the lion and I'll pop it just over him. So that it looks like it's he's standing behind the grass there and I've got a little space here next to the lion and before the grass I'm going to put another one on there a little bit fiddly but uh, it does look nice Oh, I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to use one for the back and then I've got one left so I'm just going to put another one on the front. There. Okay, now let's go to the back. I've already put the backing on, as you know, and I said that we were going to have another one of the little bears and it's just going to match this little front piece just to tie the back in with the front. You could put it here, or I'm gonna put mine at the right hand side. I'm not going to put it on a dimensional though, because after so many dimensionals, I might have to pay extra postage if I was going to post this one. And uh, I don't like to have pay extra postage. So, if I was making this to go in the post, I would only have one layer of dimensionals and that's all I'm going to put on today as well. Let's move that so you can just see that little that little V there. Now this sticks over the edge a tiny little bit, but it's not going to matter because when we fold it up, I'll make sure we fold it so that it doesn't stick out over the edges. If I folded it that way, you can see a little bit would stick out and it wouldn't fit in the envelope. But that's it all made. Now let's see about these little vines on here. Mm, I do quite like those actually. I think I think we will put those on. Um, I should have cut them out with the adhesive sheets where they're sticky. I'm not going to glue all the way. I just put a little row about two thirds of the way down. And then I'm going to put them down so that the top of it just matches the top of the card. And the rest 
is inside, but unless you turn the whole thing upside down like this, you can't see where they end. And that way I can just move them off the card a tiny bit, look. Let's do a little bit more. And put this one just a little bit lower. Stick it down underneath. Like that. And I'm going to put a little piece at this side as well. So again, I'll just put a little bit of glue down the middle. And have it sticking out so that it's just underneath those bees. Oh, that looks nice. Very pretty. And at the back, I could all... Let's have a look. Yeah, I could put a little bit more on the back here. And it'd still give me enough room to do my writing. Trim this down a little bit so it's not quite as long as the first piece. I'd probably just do my writing up here. Uh, oops, let's push that down a little bit while it's still wet. And then this little piece that I just trimmed off, I'm going to stick right at the bottom. to my thumb. Still stuck to my thumb. Let me get my paper piercer. There we are. Okay. Bend those off a tiny bit. There. Oh, that's pretty on the back, isn't it? And then, then there's the front. If I lay it down, you can probably see of the dimension a little bit better. So there we are. That's my A Little Wild card ready for the baby meeting on Sunday. So thank you very much indeed for watching. If you make one of these cards, I love it when you post a picture of it uh, in the comments. And uh, I'm always excited to see what you come up with. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a share, that means that more people will get to see the videos and more people will be able to have a go at making maybe something a little bit different. Thanks so much indeed for watching me. I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.